story eight of the bet and other stories by anton chekhov this librivox recording is in the public domain story eight a trifling occurrence nikolai ilyich bielyev a petersburg landlord very fond of the race course a well-fed pink young man of about thirty-two once called towards evening on madame irnin olga ivanovna with whom he had a liaison or to use his own phrase spun out a long and tedious romance and indeed the first pages of this romance pages of interest and inspiration had been read long ago now they dragged on and on and presented neither novelty nor interest finding that olga ivanovna was not at home my hero lay down a moment on the drawing-room sofa and began to wait good evening nikolai ilyich he suddenly heard a child's voice say mother will be in in a moment she's gone to the dressmaker's with sonya in the same drawing-room on the sofa lay olga vasilievna's son alyosha a boy about eight years old well built well looked after dressed up like a picture in a velvet jacket and long black stockings he lay on a satin pillow and apparently imitating an acrobat whom he had lately seen in the circus lifted up first one leg then the other when his elegant legs began to be tired he moved his hands or he jumped up impetuously and then went on all fours trying to stand with his legs in the air all this he did with a most serious face breathing heavily as if he himself found no happiness in god's gift of such a restless body ah how do you do my friend said bielev is it you i didn't notice you is your mother well at the moment alyosha had just taken hold of the toe of his left foot in his right hand and got into a most awkward pose he turned head over heels jumped up and glanced from under the big fluffy lampshade at bielev how can i put it he said shrugging his shoulders as a matter of plain fact mother is never well you see she's a woman and women nikolai ilyich have always some pain or another for something to do bielev began to examine alyosha's face all the time he had been acquainted with olga ivanovna he had never once turned his attention to the boy and had completely ignored his existence a boy is stuck in front of your eyes but what is he doing here what is his role you don't want to give a single thought to the question in the evening dusk alyosha's face with a pale forehead and steady black eyes unexpectedly reminded bielev of olga vasilievna as she was in the first pages of the romance he had the desire to be affectionate to the boy come here whippersnapper he said come and let me have a good look at you quite close the boy jumped off the sofa and ran to bielev well nikolai ilyich began putting his hand on the thin shoulders and how are things with you oh, how shall i put it uh, they used to be much better before how quite simple before uh, sonya and i only had to do music and reading and now we're given french verses to learn you've had your hair cut lately yes uh, just lately that's why i noticed it your beard's shorter may i touch it doesn't it hurt no not a bit why is it that it hurts if you pull one hair and when you pull a whole lot it doesn't hurt a bit ah uh, ah uh, you know it's a pity you don't have side whiskers you should shave here and at the sides and leave the hair just here the boy pressed close to bielev and began to play with his watch chain when i go to the gymnasium he said mother is going to buy me a watch i'll ask her to buy me a chain just like this what a fine locket father has one just the same but yours has stripes here and his has got letters inside is mother's picture father has another chain now not in links but like a ribbon how do you know do you see your father i mm, no i alyosha blushed and in the violent confusion of being detected in a lie began to scratch the locket busily with his fingernail bielev looked steadily at his face and asked do you see your father no no but be honest on your honour 
by your face i can see you're not telling me the truth if you made a slip of the tongue by mistake what's the use of shuffling tell me do you see him as one friend to another alyosha mused and uh, you won't tell mother he asked what next on your word of honour my word of honour swear an oath what a nuisance you are what do you take me for alyosha looked round made big eyes and began to whisper only for god's sake don't tell mother never tell it to any one at all because it's a secret god forbid that mother should ever get to know then i and sonya and pelugia will pay for it listen sonya and i meet father every tuesday and friday when pelagia takes us for a walk before dinner we go into apfel's sweet shop and father's waiting for us he always sits in a separate room you know where there's a splendid marble table and an ashtray shaped like a goose without a back and what do you do there nothing first we welcome one another then we sit down at a little table and father begins to treat us to coffee and cakes you know sonya eats meat pies and i can't bear pies with meat in them i like them made of cabbage and eggs we eat so much that afterwards at dinner we try to eat as much as we possibly can so that mother shan't notice what do you talk about there to father oh about anything he kisses us and cuddles us tells us all kinds of funny stories you know he says that he will take us to live with him when we are grown up sonya doesn't want to go but i say yes of course it'll be lonely without mother but i'll write letters to her how funny we could go to her for our holidays then couldn't we besides father says that he'll buy me a horse he's a splendid man i can't understand why mother doesn't invite him to live with her or why she says we mustn't meet him he loves mother very much indeed he's always asking us how she is and what she's doing when she was ill he took hold of his head like this and ran ran all the time he is always telling us to obey and respect her tell me is it true that we're unlucky hmm how well father says so he says you are unlucky children it's quite strange to listen to him he says you are unhappy i'm unhappy and mother's unhappy he says pray to god for yourselves and for her alyosha's eyes rested upon the stuffed bird and he mused exactly snorted bielev this is what you do you arrange conferences in sweet shops and your mother doesn't know no how could she know pelagia won't tell for anything the day before yesterday father stood us pears sweet like jam i had two hmm well now uh, tell me doesn't your father speak about me about you how shall i put it alyosha gave a searching glance to bielev's face and shrugged his shoulders he doesn't say anything in particular what does he say for instance you won't be offended what next why does he abuse me he doesn't abuse you but you know he is cross with you he says that it's through you that mother's unhappy and that you ruined mother but he is so queer i explain to him that you are good and never shout at mother but he only shakes his head does he say those very words that i ruined her yes don't be offended nikolai ilyich bielev got up stood still a moment and then began to walk about the drawing-room this is strange and funny he murmured shrugging his shoulders and smiling ironically he is to blame all round and now i've ruined her eh? what an innocent lamb did he say those very words to you that i ruined your mother yes but you said that you wouldn't get offended oh, i'm not offended and it's none of your business no it it's quite funny though i fell into the trap yet i'm to be blamed as well the bell rang the boy dashed from his place and ran out in a minute a lady entered the room with a little girl it was olga ivanovna alyosha's mother after her hopping humming noisily and waving his hands followed alyosha of course who is there to accuse except me he murmured sniffing he's right 
he's the injured husband what's the matter asked olga ivanova what's the matter listen to the kind of sermon your dear husband preaches it appears i'm a scoundrel and a murderer i've ruined you and the children all of you are unhappy and only i am awfully happy awfully awfully happy i don't understand nikolai what is it just listen to this young gentleman bielev said pointing to alyosha alyosha blushed then became pale suddenly and his whole face was twisted in fright nikolai ilyich he whispered loudly Shh! olga ivanovna glanced in surprise at alyosha at bielev and then again at alyosha ask him if you please went on bielev that stupid fool pelagia of yours takes them to sweet shops and arranges meetings with their dear father there but that's not the point the point is that the dear father is a martyr and i'm a murderer i'm a scoundrel who broke the lies of both of you nikolai ilyich moaned alyosha you gave your word of honour ah let me alone bielev waved his hand this is something more important than any words of honour the hypocrisy revolts me the lie i don't understand muttered olga ivanovna and tears began to glimmer in her eyes tell me lyoka she turned to her son do you see your father alyosha did not hear and looked with horror at bielev it's impossible said the mother i'll go and ask pelagia olga ivanovna went out but but you gave me your word of honour alyosha said trembling all over bielev waved his hand at him and went on walking up and down he was absorbed in his insult and now as before he did not notice the presence of the boy he a big serious man had nothing to do with boys and alyosha sat down in a corner and in terror told sonya how he had been deceived he trembled stammered wept this was the first time in his life that he had been set roughly face to face with a lie he had never known before that in this world besides sweet pears and cakes and expensive watches there exist many other things which have no name in children's language End of story eight.